in Horizon, I thought it was genuinely interesting that when I went and did a side quest, I got a side quest from a guy, and it was uniquely voice acted. The part where she reminds herself what to do yeah, afterwards. And you go near a cave, and she mm -hmm. reminds you, hey, yeah. oh, that's the cave. And then you go back to town, and like, oh, I should turn that thing in. Yeah. And that's from like a far away perspective. That's cool. I like I same... like that. But just yeah. don't keep don't keep playing it over and over and over. Like, but at the same time, <laughs> it's like I'm so sick of characters that won't shut their fucking mouth. Right, right, right. I understand you got a professional voice actor and you you spent all this time on all these cutscenes for every single fucking thing in the whole game, and that's cool. But I'm just letting you know that I don't actually give a fucking shit about any of that stuff. Now, as someone who hasn't played Uncharted, I missed out on what seems to be oh, the largest sure examples of this, is what oh, I hear. Oh, boy, you know? did you. Yeah. Well, you played Last of Us 1, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, imagine if Ellie didn't exist, but there was still the same amount of dialogue. Right, just to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right, that that's the average open world character's uh, thing. And it's like, I would rather, like, two extra dungeons with the amount of time that you, you spent talking to yourself. Like, look at Monster Hunter. Look how, look how stupid and pointless the story in Monster Hunter is. And how little anyone gives a goddamn shit and what a waste of time it is. You know what I need, Monster Hunter? I need a text crawl that says that I'm going to go kill a T-Grex because it's keeping some dude's wife up at night when it's screaming two towns over. And that's why the dude needs its skull. I need the barest minimum context possible to go fight a T-Grex. Yeah. Hey, I man, why am I, Why are you going to go into that nightmare poison pit fucking swamp shithole? I don't know. Maybe there's something cool in it. That's good enough. I do feel that this war of, like, Eastern and Western game design philosophies has been always... In, it's been in the background for at least three generations now. Um, and, like, admittedly, uh, some in-office conversations with, like, devs, mm -hmm. programmers, and people that, like, do this stuff can get very fart-sniffing. They can get very Tell high and more. mighty. Oh, please tell me more. <laughs> I mean, just there tell is. Tell me what it smells like. Basically, like there are times when, uh, let's just say, um, me and or friends of mine, uh, yeah. might have been playing certain Japanese games at lunchtime, right. and certain, you know, like programmers, devs, and such would walk over and kind of openly criticize what they think is some bad design decisions or like confusing implementation of things. Um, but for some reason we were all loving it and it was really cool and interesting. And, um, and it's one of these things where like in this particular case, like the person then that was criticizing and like having this, this, this the talking shit about like the design was then later on on their own booting the game up in the cafeteria to look more at what this game was doing and kind of figure it out and was like oh okay and kind of like you know uh uh, uh quote unquote got caught going back to look mm -hmm. at it and, and 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 whatever but either way the, the 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 main thing is that this 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 kind of little philosophy war that happens between the the schools of thought is mm -hmm. often decided when you see how the games sell right like oh, at yeah. the end of the day there's a thing that says like there's well there's just a thing of like okay but something is clearly landing um with a game that is telling you a little bit less here and people are still enjoying it and they're still willing to go all in on this you know like maybe it, it's not as big of a deal as you think it is and it's not to say that it like these features are not always helpful but to die on the hill that says you must include these things and anything that doesn't include it is just doing a bad job of, of yeah. communicating their game properly to their audience is like, well, um, it, it, I don't think the success of these games has proven that to be the case. There's, a, there's two ways to look at this. The first way is um, – there was like a five year period during the height of Japanese games are just bad and from like the early tens that I kept seeing this fucking um, 
this fucking design maxim trotted out and it made me fucking bug-eyed where you'd see articles being written like why does this game still have boss fights boss fights are just old-fashioned bad design there's no reason to have them in your game etc and yep, yep, just yep. like bug-eyed like what are you talking about oh it's because uncharted has terrible boss fights like that that's literally what it is um but the second one is I don't know if you saw Gene was talking about it on on Twitter, but he made a fantastic point. That'd be Gene Park uh, from Wapo, uh, but he basically says to look at Elden Ring as uh, this is a misquote paraphrase. So go check out his Twitter; he's cool anyway. Um, but looking at design as like the perfection of the ultimate perfect design formula is like a terrible idea, and to use he said that if Elden Ring had been shown off right now and the Souls series didn't exist, it would have been panned by every focus group you could throw it at. It would be not picked up. Just like Demon Souls was! Demon Souls, like, uh, Yoshida fucking was like, this shit's trash, we don't want to publish it. The fucking, that owned from software was like, fucking whatever, Miyazaki, just do whatever with this crap sucks and it was only because a couple people over at atlas were like no no there's something here and then that year it won game spots game of the year but was still widely reviled by everyone including me i fucking hated demon souls for like eight months because it was fucking stupid and awful and had all this bullshit in it but underneath all that stupid shit, there was this unique thing that only it has. And now we're all the way over here. Yeah. Like, so the, so the game that was uh, uh, being shit on uh, in the calf that one time just happened to be a little something called Vanquish. Yeah, it was Vanquish. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, Vanquish, oh, that game's <laughs> trash. Uh, whatever. Just, oh, so it. that's exactly it. Is Yeah, there, there's... <laughs> Just a very easily completely misunderstood thing, you know? And then that might lead to um, some anger, frustration, or just some lash outs God, was... when it's like, why do people like this? What is it? God, What's the thing? The... That, was, I, that wasn't just your workplace story. There was a lot of people that I saw being like, this Vanquish game is, is bad because this. And it's like, it feels the best best of what well, any shooter in like <laughs> 50 years i mean so this and it always just goes back to the god hand story right it always just goes back to oh god yeah hand. no like, you just, it, just it, teleport back in time and go read that fucking review and then go read my oh dude the god hand ign review being 3.0 and just lambasting the whole thing is one thing but then the editor's note that describes how everyone in the office hated it and they all thought it was the worst game ever and it's like that's just the cherry on top like oh no one in your whole office at the time had any taste at all yeah so it, it just you're it, it is true that like in a world that didn't have a buildup of prior from soft recent titles to to prepare for elden ring and what it is it would have absolutely been panned for these decisions um but I don't. I just think that like if you're coming at your designs and going like and thinking that like every game should have these things and it's a must. It's like coming at film, saying every film must include these types of devices, these types of scores, this type of direction and editing. It's like have you, have you seen the state of film criticism on social media? Because it's exactly like that. It's, it's and that's it's so it's ridiculous. So awful. It's so awful. Every time I see people talking about a movie and then they say how it should be more like some fucking Marvel movie I forgot I saw, I want to fucking die. So, I just feel that, like, we're we're just looking at the next uh, uh, fucking step in this dumb idea war, you know, of, of these design philosophies. And, and, and in this particular case, it's how to take a crack at an open world game. You know, I think I think my favorite part of this whole thing is that because of Elden Ring's super popularity, right? Um, there are people that have completely dodged the entirety of From Software's output forever. Yes. Like this is the first time for sure. And just seeing those people just hit it like a brick wall 
like why isn't this like a regular fucking video game is fascinating to me i am though seeing to be uh uh to be fair like that like it's a it's a hilarious thing whenever you get that response like like what the fuck am i even looking at and it's like okay it's almost like the you know remember the guy that like looks at dmc5 for the first time we're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. got it. Hype train. Everyone's excited for this new thing. You don't know what it is. Let's jump in here. I don't know what I'm looking at there. Now I hate it. And the rest is just, is history. Um, there is absolutely uh, uh, also people that are jumping in for the first time that are going like, I'm, I haven't come up for air in 80 hours now. Oh, right. Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck this was, but everyone was on it and I'm, I can't put it down. So it is going positively as well for people who are who are jumping into their first from soft game and like fucking getting hyper immersed in this one you know? oh it's 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 just it's this fascinating thing where it's like there there's the there's the oh i can't believe this thing it's not fair which is you know it's fun to watch from a distance but it's not what i'm talking about it's people who normal ass people that are playing it and they'll talk to an npc and the npc will tell them to go it, they'll, they will. There's a lot of NPCs that will literally say the phrase like "Go find this person," mm -hmm. and that's it. <laughs> that's the mm. whole thing. In some cases, they'll mention like countries you haven't heard of, and you, you're just like, "What? What is? What do you mean? Where is it? Well, how do I know that? Why? Where? Tell me anything? No." So, um, another game that I haven't played, but sounds like there's comparable elements here, and I'm curious to see, because it, it's considered successful, is um, Red Dead, right? Mm -hmm. You, you, big open world, lots of side quests, lots of main quests. Might be the, that might be, that might be the worst comparison you have ever ever made in your entire life okay so i don't know enough about red dead <laughs> that's fine um, i don't know this is why i'm asking it right um, but i was because what made me think of it is here's what made me think of it was like starting out the game i don't know how soon you get a horse uh-huh uh, how... in red dead you get a horse like in the introductory cutscene. okay um so does anything in that game have any moments kind of like what you described where you meet an NPC and then they kind of tell you to go to a town or something like that and um, you kind of have to wander into it? Or is it really guided towards these things? Because again, so, I, I'm, I'm asking, I don't know, I haven't played it. When you're, when you're wandering around, you can happen upon things in Red Dead, but the instant that a person or a human or anything occurs to you, the game will point you towards it, mark it, and then if you go there and try and do it in the way that the designer didn't design the quest to happen, you will auto fail it. Interesting. Okay. And Red, in Red Dead is the most restrictive game I have ever played. And if you are cool with playing the part of Arthur Morgan as an actor in this video game, I can understand why people would love it. Okay. But I was constantly like incensed every time I would go to look around a corner in the wrong direction, or maybe I can run away from them here. Like the game would auto fail like right away. Like so wandering playing the part of an actor in red dead two. Okay. Because I'm thinking about hearing stories of people talking about wandering through the 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 for the brush and coming across some bandits who've put a woman on the train tracks or whatever. Yeah, no, that happens. They they have some randomized events that that will occur, and there's a good deal of them. But they're just resembling other games, open world like trigger events that you wander into. Yeah, and but most of this is a a hyper scripted uh, linear uh, thing. It's it's uh, there's a there's a YouTuber called Nakey Jakey that put out a, a video. He's a, he's a cool looking guy. He sits gotcha. on a yoga ball. Uh, he put out a great video where he just described him going through a sequence of quests and how he uh, hopped on a bunch of roofs and figured out a different way into an area and 
got to a door and it wouldn't open because he, what he had to do was go to the street and talk to a guy and walk with them and talk with them and then they would open the door and it's like you 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 must do it in the exact way every time okay okay and it is it is one of the open world games that like i quit in frustration because i felt like i wasn't getting to actually play the game ever so that's still interesting to the comparison because like that's a huge popular successful rockstar game that oh absolutely is that was like a lot of people picked up and loved um but the ability but the fact that it had those shackles on you was not really i guess widely uh, uh um an issue to I, I i would suppose a casual audience right well the, the it depends it depends on what you're looking for and the weirdest thing is that uh because red dead comes from the gta series right it has yeah. the same dna mm -hmm. and red dead has two games in it the open world game in which you ride around hunt things do do uh you know uh, shoot cops uh fucking uh, uh upgrade your character find stuff out there have random events happen that's one game and that game's really cool and then there's the other game where you talk to a character and it is a playable movie like the, the you know they they want to make cinematic games well the way that they have done their cinematic game is that it is a film that you play a part in okay okay got and it. when somebody tells you to do something you must do it or else it will fail interesting cuz that's that's just not the it's not the way people talk about it you know and that and that that just goes to show you how my perception from the outside was that this was a similar sense of you can wander and discover things and that's why people so, are enjoying it. it, it I it's, never it's, took it to be as linear as you're describing. That's, that's it's hilarious. It's fascinating because like the reason why a lot of people are fine with that is because the story is really interesting okay. and it's, it's like extremely well acted and the writing's pretty good. It's a cool cowboy story. And when you're doing that stuff and you're synced into it, it's a really cool cowboy story. But if you want to, like, it basically, your 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 enjoyment of that is going to, like, hinge entirely on whether or not you want to go look over there in this particular moment. Mm -hmm. If you do, you're gonna hit a wall. It might as well be an invisible wall, right? If you don't, if you are into playing the part, oh, it's gonna be great. The story's gonna be great. You're gonna have all these cool moments because you're following the developer intention. Um, I constantly, constantly just but it slammed into that wall almost every mission. Drove me crazy. Interesting. Drove me fucking nuts. Um, and if Red Dead Redemption 2 was a linear game with a series of missions that you did in a linear area, I would probably adore that game. If, if, if Red Dead Redemption 2 was Max Payne, mm -hmm. I would love that game. And but, I think the story is great. And I think that the shooting is just fine enough for what it's doing. And it looks great, etc. But it's also combined with a wide open world in which the devs say, go anywhere, do anything. But you, in fact, don't and can't. Right. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's two games. And I really like one of them. And I really dislike the other. And I wish they were separate. Where when you look at uh, when you look at um, Elden Ring, for example, it is also two games. Um, it is an open world game that it feels a lot like Demon Souls or Dark Souls, and if you you haven't done these yet, you haven't done Stormvale or no. Lucaria the or any of those, legacy the legacy dungeons. dungeons. Mm -hmm. When you go there, it is not an open world game that feels like Dark Souls. It just, just becomes become souls. Dark Souls. Yeah, it is yeah. at like Stormvale and Lucaria that I've done so far, and what I'm going to assume is the capital, are just big ass Dark Souls levels. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it changes into that. Yeah, the um, where, just leave if you want. And whereas what you're describing also applies to the GTA format, right? Where there's the open world and then uh, yeah. there's like so, walking up to the next quest marker there's there's a yeah and there's a reason why a lot like for me 
uh, the the Grand Theft Auto series like best game is still San Andreas because uh, you would get like it was still a little scripted, but it was like escape or kill the sky, and you could just do whatever to actually do that. And then with GTA 4, when the graphics got really good, they were like, no, 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 uh, get in the car and then talk with Brucey, and then uh, you'll you'll drive to the spot and you wait there, and then the guy will come out and you'll do a drive by, and it's like. The, hanging out with Brucey in GTA 4, if anybody even remembers that character, fucking rules. That guy is alpha. But, like, I had way more fun parking my car in GTA 3 and then hopping over a fence and skipping a level and shooting a boss in the back of the head. And just doing it yourself. Than I, than I did going through these lavishly produced uh, fucking story right. missions. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and Elden and, Ring feels like a whole game made out of that. Right. Like people. Hey, did you beat it? Yeah. How'd you beat it? Well, I I I clipped my head through the wall and shot him in the ass for forty times, and he got poisoned, and then he died. Sick. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> right. Excellent. Right. Um, which also reminds think, me of the of like almost like Fallout Two things that are stories that I hear yeah. type of shit. Yeah. I think okay. the only I think the only thing I've seen in Elden Ring right now in terms of a win's a win that actually needs to go for real. There's a boss near the end of the game that you can figure out how to climb into his arena without going through the door, and his AI just doesn't turn. He just on. doesn't turn on. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And All I'm right. like, okay, that might be a little much. Guys. That's a bit. That's a bit extreme. Arrows through the fog gate. Okay. Yeah, you just walk up to him and he just stands there. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Yeah, no, I I, I feel that um, you know, uh, whatever the, like what you're describing is as like a thing that like uh, whatever people are getting like a steady diet of, I suppose you just get used to it. So mm -hmm. if you're getting a steady diet of like, you know, uh, these overdone old Ubi, Ubi formula things. At a certain point, I mean, I I know I got tired, but like that, it's I, not gonna hamper the success of one of these games. I, and I and I would go out. So as, many of those. And I would go as far as to say that like, if Horizon didn't have an Elden Ring in its way, it would make a huge difference in in that game's like, success. Like like definitely. Like genuinely, the. Of I have played almost all of those types of games because I really like wandering around a big location. I absolutely love wandering around a big place and finding things. And in that context, to this day, after going through almost all of them, the two best ones to come out that follow that formula since um assassin's creed one let's say which was the the beginning of the towers mm -hmm. is assassin's creed brotherhood because it's the first really genuinely super incredible assassin's creed game and then ghosts of tsushima all those years later because you pick a point on the map and the wind points you in the direction so you don't have to check the fucking map again right like the, that <laughs> one feature with Tsushima over the whole thing. Oh, and Spider Man because swinging Spidey. by itself is incredible. Sp yeah, swinging is the best. Yeah, but like, like out of all of them, there have been like forty that have come out. Mm -hmm. Like movement feels really good. You get to not have to look at the map so much, and then Zelda because you could do whatever. And now there's this. And it's like, God, please, God, Lord, make it more fun to explore the actual location. The Climb the tower and see the shit and go to the shit and play a fucking side quest that is a type of side quest that will repeat itself. It, I'm fucking so tired. I'm so tired of it. And also, once you stop moving and you get to the location, I mean, in this case, when you in Elden Ring, you get to the location and you stop, and now you're you're still playing a Souls game. Like it's yeah. the weapon choices, the build, the combat, everything you're doing is you got all that cool shit. 
you know, Breath of the Wild, you you get to the location and you're playing Zelda. You know, yeah. like the thing needs to like the, the basis the, of what you're doing as well and how you're fighting in the combat and all that shit needs to be built on an ing ingredients that are fucking proven. Of yeah, we, we, we had Breath of the Wild uh, five years ago, five, I want to say, but we had Breath of the Wild many years ago and it said, no, you don't have to make games like this. You can make them like this. Right. And everyone went, wow, cool. And then nobody changed how they made games at all. Mm. <laughs> and now Elden Ring is the the design sequel to Breath of the Wild. It's the only the first one. And they went, no, oh, look, you can make games like this. And hopefully some games will make their areas more interesting to move in. Or the way you move to get to them. Something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else of note? Fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, I, I, okay. Here's a really good example of the hold that Elden Ring has on my heart. When I was streaming on Friday night, I this was day eight of streaming nine plus hours, and I got to about hour six, and I started to do that thing where I was like, "Hey, I have to go." castle bad ba poison and like brain out the brain ears. brain was bad words no good neurotransmitters used up mm -hmm. right okay maybe don't stream saturday gonna call like yeah get coin exactly thank you bapity jones um all right and i'm like okay i need to turn this off I need to stop streaming. I need to relax. And you know what would be a really good way to relax? I'm going to start up a samurai and see how fast I can break market in under two hours. And the answer is pretty hard. And that was me. That was the way to relax Relaxing. from streaming Elden mm -hmm. Ring was mm -hmm. to play chill more. out and play Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That's where it's at. <laughs> All right. Um... Pretty okay. good game. Pretty good game. There you go. That's another uh, 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 all-encompasser. That's a that's a good game. At this point, honestly, uh, like we'll, we're going to talk about it next week, but all I want to hear is you tell me about the shit that you found. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I want. I, I feel like this is going to be a big week because uh, I've... I've set up all of the like discovery zones and then now yeah, I can you can just... bang out like 10 caves exactly that's what i'm excited to do is to just teleport to the start and just hit them up one by one you know those um... caves get way better once you get out of limb grave okay so in limb grave they pretty much usually have one floor and whether or not you go up and down a staircase like there's still only one like horizontal plane the instant you leave limb grave um you're getting caves that are like four floors deep. You're getting catacombs that uh, loop back on each itself, or you have to do bullshit around their elevators to progress. Like they become a lot more complex. Also, hello, kitty cat. Kitty cat. I mean, you, just, you know how like that that um, the 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 tree, uh, the ulcerated tree is like you hit it and you go, uh, maybe, but nah. Well, let me come back in a little bit. Um, the fucking double tutorial eight armed whatever thing like that all is right. the hardest nope i've encountered so far all right let me let me all right let me tell you something let me tell you something about that room because i think okay. i have a strat down and okay. that strat involves not just not even fighting them <laughs> all right hold on hold on hold on let me tell you something about that room okay because that room represented three hours of my life off camera all right, those are grafted scions. Okay, mm -hmm. they come down mm -hmm. and they fucking sandwich you in there. And there's a cool item that they're got guarding. it. Yeah, got it. Well, I'm just talking item, about okay? the kill. So know? the only way I was able to fight it, the only way was to uh, drag them back into the fire trap. Oh my god! And the fire trap will do like maybe one fifth of their oh health. Oh my you... god! Wait, wait. But 
<laughs> Wait, not the whole thing. No, 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 no. So you have to you have to clear out the enemies. Then you have to drag just one of them back to the fire trap. Now you have to dodge all their bullshit and wait for the fire trap to hit them four more times while also not yourself getting in the way of the fire trap. Okay? And then you do that to both of them, and do you know what you get? You get nothing! Nothing! You get nothing! Okay? They are there to scare you and have you go into the pit to get to a new area. Don't fight them. Don't bother. Okay? They are worthless. Jeez. You don't even get that many souls. You get like 2,000. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Because I was... I put, a, I put some time in, and I was getting it down to a point where it's like, all right, if we dance around the wall and don't oh, walk too close to the pit... We won't aggro both because if you aggro both, it's over. So you aggro yeah. one, you key and you keep your back to the wall, and then you only swing after uh, the slam, and then maybe we'll get this done. Yeah, no. What you do is you go down into the pit, and then the pit leads you to an elevator, which puts you to that that outcropping halfway oh, down the, the slope. Jesus Christ! Right? You fight an enemy there. He gives you an item, and then you take a bow out, and you actually look <sighs> at the roof. You look at the roof of the path the chariot goes, and there's magic pots. And if you shoot the rope on the magic pot with good timing, the magic pot will fall and destroy the chariot. And then the chariot will be destroyed for the remainder of your runs. This was like a whole afternoon of my life oh, after I Jesus fucking killed those Christ. guys. Christ. Okay. <laughs> so I got knocked down in the pit and died, but I didn't actually... Well, there's a there's a part of the pit you I can saw, fall into. I saw that there was... Not a yeah, I saw there was stuff. Oh, and you get a faith break though for doing that. But I never actually like Jesus fucking Christ, man. <laughs> That's the shortcut, by the way. The shortcut is falling down that pit and then destroying the chariot, so then you don't have to worry about the chariot. And then turns out if you run all the way down and don't take the the first right, take the first right uh with the the archer in it, you don't take fall damage off that. So you can just sprint down, jump off, sprint. That's what. That's my way left. down. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's my way down. Is you not taking the fall damage, but then off the pit, past the two goblins. Oh my god. Oh Jesus Christ. Fucking hell. This game. Okay. All right. All right. This is just one hole in the ground. At the tutorial level area. <laughs> yeah. I think. I think my favorite. I think my favorite. What are you talking about? Is I was talking to Paige. And she beat Stormvale. She beat it. Right? She's like, I, she got Godric and she did it. And I'm like, oh, you explored all of uh, Stormvale, right? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, did you find the giant face in the basement? And she went, no. And then I had to show her that there's a jumping puzzle in, in one fucking area to get to, a fu to the basement of Stormvale. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. God. All right. 